You know, the inscription on the Statue of Liberty starts out, Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Is that not what also Christ asked for? So let us welcome those people into our church, right? Amen. Our scripture for this morning comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 20. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of God for the people of God. So I had this thought um, since we put our sermons out there online as well, and it's that I've never really said welcome to our viewers online. So this morning, welcome to you that may be watching online, and obviously welcome to all you that are here in person today. So as we finish this week with our series in Ephesians, so this will be our final uh, sermon based on Ephesians in this little series that we have done. Uh, we find Paul once again calling on the people of his time, and ours as well, with instructions on how we are to be living our lives. And what we find at the start of today's scripture is a reminder to us that we are not to be wasting time on things that are not important. That we are to be wise with our time that we have, spending it in worship and filled with the Spirit. And in the end of this week's scripture, Paul calls us to be singing and making melody to the Lord with our heart and giving thanks to God for everything in the name of Jesus. Now, to me, when I read that scripture, that is especially that ending part of the scripture, what really jumps out to me is this idea that we are to be living our lives with a sense of joy. It feels like joy is something that is in short supply in our world today. When we look around, we tend to see anger. And indeed, when we see someone or meet someone that is joyful, often our first thought is, what is wrong with you? How could you be so happy all the time? You know, what do you have to be so happy about? Have you ever known someone that just seems to be going on in their life and no matter what is happening to them, they have a smile on their face? It's as if the world could be ending, their house could be on fire, their dog could have run away, their truck could have broken down, and their baby could have done left them, as they would say in an old country song. And it doesn't seem to phase that person at all. They continue on with that smile on their face. So I have known several people throughout my life that simply existed with a sense of joy and happiness no matter what came their way. And I will be entirely honest with you, church. When I talked to those people, I did not uh, view them with a sense of awe or a sense of jealousy. When I would look at them and see how happy they were no matter what came their way, often I wondered, what is wrong with you? How can you possibly be happy in this situation? See, I was guilty of reacting the way that most of the world does when we find someone that seems to be happy all the time. And I'll give you a great example of this. Uh, when I was working at the borough in Lewistown during my summers uh, between college, whenever it would rain, see, our primary job was to mow grass. Mow grass, weed eat, that's what we did. But when it would rain, our job was to go to the waste treatment plant. And we had to shovel out the dry beds. Now, what are dry beds, you may ask? Well, let me tell you what dry beds are. The dry beds were where they would pump liquid sludge out of the treatment facility, which was the leftover solid material that was cleaned up, processed, and separated from the water. 
the water was pumped back into the river, but the chemical sludge that remained was pumped into these big greenhouse type buildings that were essentially huge litter boxes. But not cat litter boxes, human litter boxes is what they were. And so our job on those rainy days was to go into these giant litter boxes that were really like greenhouses because they were kept very warm and hot to dry out the materials and then load the materials into a roll-off box that would be taken to the dump. So on a day when we knew it was going to rain all day, we knew that is where we would be working. And one week we had a particularly wet week and we found ourselves working day after day in a hot, humid building, shoveling who really knows what at this point for hours on end. And after the third day, it became pretty disheartening to go into work knowing it was going to rain again that day. But there was one guy that worked with us, and he was always happy on the days when it would rain. He would come in with a big smile on his face, and he'd always laugh and joke about, well, I guess we're going over to the treatment plant today. And the rest of us would just look at him and wonder, how can you be happy doing this? You know, we could be out mowing grass or doing something, though, even though it was hard physical labor, at least we weren't stuck in that building all day. And so finally, one day, I just asked him, how are you so happy to be doing this again today? And he responded with, I have two choices, Eric. I can either be miserable about it, or I can be joyful for the fact that I have a job, that I'm working with people that I like, and that I didn't get sent home today and I still have a chance to earn money for school. And do you see the difference between what he was thinking and what the rest of us were thinking? We were so focused on all the negative things about that job and all the bad parts, but he was just happy to have the opportunity to work. Now that is the right attitude to have when the little things in life come our way, right? We shouldn't allow ourselves to wallow in self-pity when truly the issue isn't a big deal at all. You see, we that are believers, we are to allow the Lord to be part of our troubles. We are to do this so that we can allow him to help carry us. So that when we do our best to carry ourselves with a sense of joy when, he, when we know he's there with us. But what do we do in life when we are faced with something that is truly a big problem? How do we face something that is making our lives truly miserable, that no matter how hard we try, we just can't seem to be joyful? Well, you need to know this. When you find yourself feeling that way, you need to know that you are not failing. Even the most upbeat person will experience times in their lives when they struggle to find joy. See, I, like you, have heard sermons on joy multiple times in my life, right? But often, we fail to acknowledge that sometimes joy is hard and that everyone will struggle to find it at times. See, that young man that I spoke about that was happy to go over to the dry beds whenever it rained, he was a pretty good friend of mine, and I knew him very well. And I can tell you that there were times that even he would get down. So you need to know that just because you are struggling to find joy at some point in your life, you're not failing. There's an idea that as Christians, we are to be happy all the time, that we should just grin and bear it, whatever we are dealing with. And while I do encourage you not to wallow in self-pity in small things, you need to know that there are times when feeling sad is appropriate. You also need to know in those moments that is when God wants you to lean on him even more. Often we think of God as being the God of the hills of our lives. We praise him for the good things that come our way. At least we should be praising him for the good things that come our way. But God is also the God of the valleys of our life as well. He is there with us in those low points. And that is when he wants us to call on him even more. Second, I want you to know that there is no shame in asking for help when you are struggling. Again, I know at times it feels like somehow we're not living up to being a Christian 
if we're asking for help. That if we seek help somewhere else, we're saying, I don't trust in God to heal me. That is not what we are saying. Think of it this way, brothers and sisters. It's like if you broke your arm and you just said, Lord, heal my arm. Oh, he might do it. And he is certainly capable of doing it. But he's also probably going to look at you and say, you know, I created that doctor to help you. I helped science advance so you wouldn't be in pain for no reason. So, hey, why don't you just go to the ER as well? So you need to know that if you need to seek professional help for how you're feeling, God is okay with that. And you are not less of a Christian or less of a person because you seek help. And finally, I want to talk about joy in this light. Brothers and sisters, what are we doing to foster a community with joy in it? Are we working hard at building each other up? You see, we as a community of believers need to be doing everything we can to spread joy in each other's lives. I think we do a great job of being there for one another in times of struggle. And I pray that we continue to do so. But I think we as a people, myself included, we could really do better at being happy for others when things go well for them. I want you to think about these two things that have been a struggle for churches from the time of Jesus to now. And that is jealousy and gossip. Think about it. The apostles were jealous of one another, were they not? Constantly arguing over who was the greatest, who was the best. Lord, who do you love the most? Who's going to take over when you're gone? Many references throughout the Bible to that. And we see many references in the epistles of Paul where he warns against gossip inside the church. Well, brothers and sisters, if we can foster a community that only rejoices when something good happens to one of our members, well, then that's going to eliminate all the jealousy and most of the gossip. So let us commit ourselves to being those people. Let us be joyful people praising the Lord together. Let us be joyful people building each other up at all opportunities. And if we can do so, then we will be a community that is worthy of the gospel. So my challenge for you this week is this. Find someone and do something to spread some joy in their life. And do so in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.